what was the last thing you did? I saw you fixed your hair and you used your phone and of course you just pressed a button. All of you used your hands. Hello, my name is James and my PhD is about your sense of touch. Deloitte Access Economics estimates that in Australia in 2015, 50,000 people will suffer a stroke. That's roughly 1,000 a week or one every 10 minutes. For a long time, there's been no treatment for the effects of stroke. The National Institute of Health states that 65% of people who suffer a stroke will end up with a paralyzing disability that interferes with their conduct of daily living. Furthermore, only 10% of sufferers of stroke can expect to make a complete recovery. Recently, however, that's changed with the development of exoskeletons. An exoskeleton is a wearable robot. You can see an example on the slide behind me. A lot like Wallace and Gromit's new trousers, you put the exoskeleton on around the paralyzed part of your body and it moves it for you. However, wearing an exoskeleton can feel a lot like playing the children's game, Helping Hands. So in Helping Hands, if you're not familiar, you put your hands behind your back and have a partner reach their arms around from behind you and you try to cooperate to do a task like eat a bowl of cereal or apply makeup. The problem with the exoskeleton is that like your helper in Helping Hands, you and the exoskeleton don't share a sense of touch. When you reach out to pick up an apple or to grab your toothbrush or tie your shoelaces, incredibly detailed information about the forces being felt at your fingertips are sent from your hand to your brain by your nerves. And your brain uses that signal as feedback to control your muscles so that you can reach into the dishwasher, pick up a glass and put it safely on the shelf without crushing it and cutting your hand. I am attempting to record the electrical signals sent from the hand to the brain by your nerves and trying to work out how we can decode that signal. As you can see on the slide behind me, so far I can use a single electrode to record from one finger the electrical activity and using machine learning I can decode something of the forces it represents. Now the results I have so far are promising and I'm currently building a simple exoskeleton that will move one finger while feeling what that finger feels. Eventually, I hope that my research will help us understand not just one finger or the whole hand, but the sense of touch from your entire body, allowing us to build systems to help paralyzed people carry out all those activities of day-to-day -day life that you and I take for granted, including pressing that button. Thank you.